They made a weapon out of what? Fleet Officer Seekless sighed, ran a hand over his thorax and stared at the data stick. It lay on his desk as if taunting him. He knew he would have to view it, write a report, and send it up the chain of command. That was the entirety of his job. But not what he had joined up for. He wanted to start out as a targeting officer on one of the plasma lance cannons, just raining indiscriminate destruction down onto a planet's surface from high orbit. Or maybe, in his wilder dreams, a fighter pilot. Instead, he was colorblind. He could barely see above 800 nanometers in wavelength, so he got shunted off into administration. He wasn't sure what secondhand embarrassment was waiting for him on the data stick, but he knew he needed a strong drink before he watched the human report on the stick. Five minutes later, and a large glass of straight myelk in the hand, Sickless accessed the data stick. Half an hour later, his drink was still untouched. Fleet Station Commodore Selly's communicator pinged. She sighed. She wasn't in charge of the station itself, just everything having to do with the fleet on the station. Still, that was more than enough. Then she saw the name on the communicator. Third Sub-Lieutenant Seekless. What does that little pissant want now? She groaned. A Kralian munitions barge probably docked three centimeters off center from their landing pad, and he wants to requisition a squad to measure the deleterious effects on our orbit, her secretary Terrell said. Motherfucker, she muttered. Why haven't we replaced him with an AI yet and sent him off to waste reclamation? You owe Commander Frankel 350 credits from your last game of Setnak. Also, he conveniently looked the other way the last time you reclamated 2nd Sub-Lieutenant Scherf's stack of data sticks. You know they clogged up the physical waste recycler unit for 30 hours. Oh, shit. Don't even remind me of that self-important scrotal hair counter. Sellies paused, getting a bit suspicious. What did happen to him, though? I believe you informed him that you had a standing order to space him if you ever saw him again. Sellies pondered. I don't suppose I can give the same standing order for the third sub-lieutenant, can I? I'm afraid the Fleet Station's council can only look the other way when it comes to the occasional spacing. Besides, ma'am, we all know you can come up with something far more creative. Sellies smirked. Stars. She hated being stuck in a glorified chop shop and shit recycler especially when she was saddled with so many fuck-for-brains junior officers. Unfortunately, Fleet Dreadnought Command had taken a poor view of her maneuvers at the Battle of Rosk ten years ago. They had won her the battle, but they weren't traditional. Fucking inbred twits wouldn't know creativity if it bit them in their collective egg sacks. Fine. We have to at least let him have his say. She rummaged around in her desk, pulled out her sidearm, checked to make sure it was loaded and the safety was off, then set it down on top of her desk where the red danger light was clearly visible. Is that for us or him? Terrell asked. Maybe first him, then us. It might be the only way we'll ever escape this shit heap of an assignment. Third Sub-Lieutenant Seekless entered the room. The data stick clutched tightly in his hand, saw the sidearm on the desk and paused. He swallowed nervously. Fleet Commodore Sellies grinned, showing the tips of her two vestigial fangs. Fleet Commodore, ma'am! Cyclist stuttered out. We have a new data stick from a human ship that just came and docked. Sellies groaned inwardly. It wouldn't surprise her if this Cyclist actually needed help finding his own asshole. It was certainly beneath her duties to give a shit about any random ship coming into the station, and especially some human ship. She stroked the top of the sidearm with her fingertips and bared her fangs a bit more. I thought you should see it. Sorry, Commodore, bye. Cyclist spoke as quickly as he could dropped the stick on her desk and bolted. Sellies raised an eye hood. That might be a record. 30 seconds from coming into leaving, Terrell agreed. Please make sure my sidearm remains in working order. Sellies put the safety back on and replaced it in her desk. What should we do with that? Terrell motioned to the stick. Sellies sighed. Look over it, I suppose. On the off chance, the extremely off chance that it's anything worth my attention, let me know. Otherwise, dump it in the reclamator. Just to remind Frankel who's in charge of this shit heap. Two minutes later, Terrell called Commodore Sellies into her office. Thirty minutes later, Sellies called a meeting of the command officers, as soon as possible. Forty minutes later, the senior department officers had gathered in the main meeting room. All right, you brain-dead assholes. You need to watch this. The Commodore popped the data stick into the viewer. 
The scene showed a small and clearly old human ship on an intercept course with three Eshar cruisers. Some of the officers started chuckling. A few of them started talking about how they were here to have a few laughs before getting back to work. Then the first Eshar cruiser was, well, it was shredded on the video. There was no other way to describe it. The cruiser had only managed to get one wild shot off before their ship became flying scraps. Over the next 20 minutes, they watched as the little human ship slugged it out with two Eshar cruisers simultaneously. When the video was over, the silence in the room was heavy. Did, did that little old bucket of rust and scrap just take down three Eshar cruisers? Captain Pelkeys asked. It would seem so, Commodore Sellies said wearily. Well, I suppose even the most basic of species has to get lucky sometime, Commander Frankel said. The fleet intelligence officer Mulis was laughing. This shocked the assembled officers into a new silence. Mulis rarely spoke. During their regular meetings, he delivered his reports with a minimum of words, and that was it. He never cracked a smile, even though his race was well known for their refined sense of humor. He certainly never laughed. If he had friends, they would have claimed he was incapable of laughing. The rest of you really have no idea about humans, do you? Mulis asked. Everyone looked uncomfortable. Well, they're not very highly developed, Frankel began. Mulis waved his comment aside. In the Lovek conflict, human ships accounted for 73% of enemy casualties. What? Frankel spluttered. But, but they're not even really in the fleet. Yes, as they took part in various conflicts from the beginning of their time in the GC, it became clear that we were all better served by letting them do their own thing. What the fuck kind of fleet idea is that? Sellies asked. Not a single one of those limp dicks up there has ever had a creative idea since suckling their mother's royal jelly. If they did, I'd still be blasting the tits off Eshar assholes in a dreadnought. Mulis smirked. Look, humanity first took part on the side of GC forces during the succession crisis. They weaponized the planet of Frio. Frankel looked puzzled. So they put defenses in orbit over a useless planet? It didn't help. The planet was destroyed. No, Mulis said. You misunderstand me. They weaponized Frio. They turned the entire planet into one massive weapon. The stunned silence at this pronouncement lasted a moment. How, how the fuck did they turn an entire gas giant into a weapon? Sellies asked, stunned. Our best scientists still don't know, Mulis replied. Frio took out three quarters of the succession fleet. But fleet just sends humans off to unimportant places. Well, no. Fleet actually sends humans off to classified places. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for the next story.